So that afternoon, I had four truckloads of corn to unload. How much corn? I go down there and start unloading it. We had a 60-foot auger, 8-inch auger, that carried the corn to the top of the bin. And it was hooked to a PTO shaft to a 72-horsepower tractor called a 2640. And I opened it wide open, and I'm running that auger. And I start opening the floodgate on the truck and start unloading the corn. Everything's going good. Hey, at this rate, it takes me about two hours to unload two truckloads of corn. I got a hot date with a cheerleader after the ball game. And I'm starting. Because, I mean, you know, it's my third senior year. I've been starting for five years. <laughs> <laughs> I taught my brother into grinding feed for the hogs, so he would do that while I'm, you know, getting ready for the ball game. So I'm sitting there, and I'm feeling pretty good about everything. Well, sure as the world, if you farm, you know one thing. If you're in a hurry and you're trying to get something done, something's going to break. Ain't it, little James? <laughs> something's going to break if you're in a hurry. That's Murphy's Law on the farm. <laughs> well, I overloaded the auger, bound up the auger, rung the shear pin off on the PTO shaft going to that gearbox. I know this is pretty technical, but we're trying to get this on tape. <laughs> so I sheared the shear pin off, and this was a new auger. We had not had a chance to tear all the safety shields off and throw them away yet. <laughs> so I went and got the 10 steps, cut that little ring on the safety shields, cut those off and tore them off, threw them away, because we don't need no stinking shields. <laughs> now, 5 16 roll pin. They sheared the roll pin. I could go to Revels Tractor Company, but I know they ain't gonna have it. Because this is what you're gonna hear. Oh, it's not a high volume item. <laughs> we can have it in here tomorrow with that extra shipping and handling if you want to. But I know a little bit about agri engineering, agricultural engineering. 20 penny nail is the same size as a 5 16 roll pin. So I take that 20 penny nail, I drive it in there. What about it, James? That's exactly right. Drove it in there, bend it over. Yeah! I've only lost about five minutes. I open the tractor back up, start cleaning the auger out. I know not to overload it, so I'm running it. And I'm feeling pretty good about myself because, hey, I got everything back running. I don't need to put those stupid shields back on. I might shear it again. Then I'll have to take them off again. That's just the way we ride, you know? Because <laughs> farming's the most dangerous occupation in America. You know how I know? Farm Journal told me so. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. I got a belief from cops in South Central Los Angeles are going, we put that riot down, that sniper missed us. Boy, I'm damn glad we ain't great raising feeder pigs right now. <laughs> That's pretty dangerous. So I'm unloading this and I'm feeling pretty good. Now here's an here's a, uh, axiom of physics that you didn't know about farm life. If you watch a load of whatever you're unloading, watch it, it will unload faster. Did you know that, ma'am? That's, that's true. So I'm watching it as it's unloading and I jump up, I look in the back of the truck, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I'm feeling pretty good about myself, I can't wait. So I jump up, look in the back of the truck, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'm dancing around, acting like an idiot. I jumped up again, look in the back of the truck as it's sliding down and I took a step back and I stepped one step too far back. And I backed into that PTO shaft, <laughs> traveling 540 RPMs, hooked to a 70 horsepower tractor with a bent 20 penny nail. <laughs> and it grabbed me. <laughs> Let me tell you something, when a 20 penny nail grabs you in the crack of your butt, <laughs> you know you've been grabbed. <laughs> it felt like somebody dropped a chainsaw in my underwear. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I knew immediately something was amiss. <laughs> so I grabbed my and dropped, ah! Thank you, Jesus. Now, you got to understand, it's September, it's hot. I had a brand new pair of bibbed overalls on. Oshkosh, my gosh. <laughs> no T-shirt. John Deere hat. Wolverine work boots. Had them boys unbuttoned on the side to get that cross ventilation cutting across. <laughs> Nature's air conditioning. <laughs> wow! And it let me go. Thank you, Jesus. Because I just knew it would kill me, break my back, flip me over, break my back, kill me. And it let me go. And I'm thinking my lucky stars. And all of a sudden, something's coming around going, pop, 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 wear my butt out. I turn around and look, and the bottom of my pants legs hanging off that PTO shaft. Boy, that's odd, isn't it? And just as I had that thought, I felt a chill, kind of a breeze cut across. The only thing I had on between me and the Lord was a pair of Wolverine work boots and a John Deere hat. <laughs> it had jerked my clothes off, fruit of the looms and all. I'm naked. 
Not naked, naked. I'm just as naked as the day I come in this world. My brother, being a younger brother, two years younger, being the loving, kind, understanding brother I have, saw this happen as he's grinding feed about from here to the end of this room. He saw it happen and immediately fell on the ground laughing so damn hard. The boy could not breathe. He was laughing so hard he swallowed his tongue and collapsed in a heap. And he started turning blue as my blue jeans. And I thought, oh my Lord, the boy's dying. Maybe I should run over and give him some CPNR. <laughs> and then I thought, no. How's this gonna look? You know, I mean, think about it. Dad drives up, he's got one naked son kissing on the other one. He's gonna pull up and think he done raised a couple of Carolina graduates. <laughs> we hate the tar holes. Go stay. I said, if he dies, he dies. He's on his own. I got problems of my own. I am not exaggerating this. I'm not making a word of this up. This is the truth, the whole truth. I'm not smart enough to make this up. <laughs> this is how I got into comedy, telling this story. So I pulled the kill switch on the tractor. Now, it's broad daylight. We lived on a dirt road. My, matter of fact, the name of my DVD is Life Down a Dirt Road. Because we lived on a dirt road, right in the middle of a dirt road. Neighbors on both ends. That's where we farmed. Now, I'm faced with a dilemma. My brother's laying there passed out. <laughs> I'm butt naked, it's broad daylight, and between the house and the grain bins is a five foot high fence that runs the whole length of the property to the road. And mother has planted rose bushes from one end to the other. I ain't got a scratch on me. I don't have a scratch on me that nailed it and it just busted and jerked my clothes off. I'm not jumping no rose bushes dangling. Now, my other option is I run up the path, I hit the dirt road, I run up the hill, I go in behind the house, I run in, go up on the back porch, go through the sliding glass door, go get some clothes on. No harm, no foul. So I took my hat off, covered what I could, best I could. <laughs> and I take off running up the path. This is about 1976, 1977. As I'm running up the path, butt naked, all I can think of, oh yes, they call him the street, boogity, boogity, that fast thing on two feet, boogity, boogity, and I'm dying laughing. I am just laughing my butt off. I'm naked, I'm running up the road, my brother's passed out. And as I hit the dirt road to run up to mom and dad's, which is about a hundred yard dash, we have a neighbor that lives at one, we have neighbors that live at both ends, but we had this one neighbor owned several hundred acres of land that we rented from. Very big in the church, elderly lady in her 80s. <laughs> Had a brand spanking new sedan DeVille. She was coming down the hill, sun was in her eyes. I saw her before she saw me. I thought, oh my Lord. <laughs> if this lady sees me, she'll never rent us any more to land. She's just gonna think I'm some kind of demented pervert. <laughs> and she's a good Southern Baptist woman. She, you know, big time church, and I, oh, my Lord. So I took my hat and I covered my face like this. <laughs> I didn't want her to know who it was. <laughs> sure, now that I look back 35 years ago, maybe I should have left it where it was. But I covered my face and I was still running and as I passed her, I saw her go. <laughs> and she ran that big cat like, boom! right in the ditch. So I jump the ditch, go up behind the house, <laughs> run up on the back porch, and my mother's sitting there watching her stories. Because it's about four in the afternoon, she's watching her stories, reading the paper in the recliner. She's never locked the doors in the house my whole life, ever, until that day. 
All of a sudden, I come up on the back porch. Mom, open the door. And she looks, and there stands her 18-year-old son, 6'1", 190 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. <laughs> but naked, as the day she brought me in the world. She got up, didn't even have a surprise look on her face. <laughs> Took her newspaper, rolled it up really nice and tight, walked over, unhooked the door, slid it back. As I stepped one step in the house, she beat me like a cocker spaniel. How many times I tell you not run around the yard naked? <laughs> oh, like I do this every day, Betty. I'm beating her off. My brother comes falling in. <laughs> Proceeds to tell her how I nearly got killed. I go back to the bedroom, get on some clothes. As I'm coming by the front door, the doorbell rings. Ding, ding. And so a neighbor's standing there. <laughs> Open the door. I say, yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Jerry, you ain't gonna believe what I just saw. <laughs> yes, ma'am, what would that be? A naked man <laughs> ran up the road behind your mama's house. <laughs> yes, ma'am, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, isn't it? <laughs> she goes, look, I don't know where he went, but I ran my car off in the ditch. Would you be so kind as to pull me out, young man? I said, yes, ma'am, let me get my shoes and socks on. <laughs> And I pulled her out and she said, thank you so much, Jerry. We just love y'all to death. I said, listen, y'all be careful now. That pervert's running around the neighborhood. <laughs> and if you see him again, you send him up by the house. <laughs> I ain't seen a naked man in 40 years. <laughs> I'll leave $20 in the mailbox. <laughs> true story. I'm not smart enough to make that up. And she didn't say she'd leave 20 in the mailbox, but she always, after that, had the most wicked little grin when she'd see me. <laughs>